I've got an idea. Since I've read the slime novels, I'll watch the new season and make a video discussing everything the anime skipped. I mean, an anime can't cover everything, right? Right? Oh boy, was I wrong. It turns out Slime Season 3 is so faithful to the source material that while watching, with the book in hand, you can nearly read along with the dialogue. That being said, this video still exists because there's quite a few details the anime left out or just glazed over. For a small example from the book, during the Walpurgis Feast, Ramirez was supposed to ask if she can move to Tempest and get immediately denied. That being said, let's begin with the largest and most interesting topic the skipped details between the Rimuru versus Hinata battle. Without a doubt, the sword fight is a feast for the eyes, but there was a lot going on behind the scenes in our competitors' minds. The anime did a good job of showing Rimuru's struggle, but I think its depiction of Hinata's perspective left a lot to be desired. You see, from the moment the duel began, Hinata was forced into using her measurer skill, which speeds up her brain by a thousand times. This being similar to Rimuru's thought acceleration makes it seem like not a big deal. However, Hinata is merely human, so pushing herself to these limits causes the capillaries in her brain to burst, resulting in a nosebleed from the trauma. Then even after pushing herself this far, and using a prediction skill to, well, predict her opponent's attacks, Hinata still feels as though Rimuru is toying with her. Now, her regeneration abilities are able to repair the nosebleed slash brain trauma. However, being a purely physical being, she's still restrained by stamina, so to end this quickly, she begins pushing her swordplay to the max. Unknown to Hinata, Rimuru has been struggling to keep up from the start, even though his brain's processing speed is far superior. His lack of experience puts him at a serious disadvantage. So at this point in the fight, I'd argue the anime changed a rather crucial detail. You see, in the anime, Rimuru acquires the skill Predict Future Attack. And that's not wrong, but it's not quite right either. In Tintura, characters can unlock skills through a variety of different methods, but in a very broad sense, something happens to the character, and suddenly the ability is unlocked. However, in this instance, the light novel made it very clear, Rimuru did not acquire this skill. Raphael learned it from observing Hinata. In case the significance of that didn't immediately sink in, allow me to rephrase it. Raphael, aka Rimuru, stole Hinata's skill by simply watching her use it. This begs the question, can Raphael only learn skills weaker than itself? Or if given enough time and energy, can it learn literally any skill it comes across? At this point in the story, we have no idea, but I'd bet a lot of money this isn't the last time we see Raphael learn a new skill this way. Continuing on, Rimuru accepts Hinata's wager and confronts Melt Slash head on. This encounter, where Rimuru sacrifices Belzebuth, is mostly the same in the light novel. However, three small details were skipped that I feel you'll want to know. First off, Rimuru was confident he'd survive this clash. However, some part of him was apparently worried, because in the book, he asked Benimaru to take charge in the unlikely event of his death. Next, at the moment just before impact, Rimuru noticed that Hinata was clearly aiming for his stomach, as she was trying to give him the best chance of survival. Then lastly, it took 70% of Rimuru's total magic power to consume Melt Slash, and upon impact, Hinata's sword was consumed as well, so it's accurate to say that both people in this clash had to sacrifice something important. Moving forward, the sword explodes, Hinata takes the hit, and Rimuru rushes to heal her. As we previously discussed, Hinata is merely human, and if you didn't know, humans don't survive very long with a gaping hole through their torso. So isn't it kind of odd how long Hinata survives like this in the anime? Well, the light novel has an answer for that. As you know, Hinata's body cannot be healed by magicules, so there was only one way Rimuru could extend her life. Our slime morphed part of his own body into a makeshift human heart, which kept her blood flowing, buying just enough time for Luminous to arrive. If you're like me, thinking this sounds ridiculous, well, remember back to Season 2, because Rimuru did something like this once before for Murin. In regard to the Rimuru vs Hinata battle, there's only one more detail we need to discuss, specifically about Raphael sacrificing Belzebuth. In the anime, we get a cheeky little scene where Rimuru asks if they really needed to sacrifice it, and Raphael just kinda dodges the question. The light novel, however, goes into a lot more detail as to why Raphael did what it did. You see, Melt Slash doesn't use standard magicules. Instead, it harnesses spiritual particles. At the time, Rimuru's Absolute Defense wasn't able to fully defend against spiritual particles. But wait, didn't Absolute Defense block Trinity Disintegration? 
You see, sacrificing Beelzebuth to consume Melt Slash allowed Raphael to properly analyze spiritual particles, which then gave it the knowledge required for absolute defense to block out spiritual-based attacks, aka Trinity Disintegration. Now that all being said, it's also revealed that Rimuru probably could have survived Melt Slash with his regeneration alone. But you know, Raphael really likes analyzing new things, and our Demon Lord even admits he prefers this outcome. Speaking of interesting outcomes, let's rewind a bit to discuss how exactly Rosin, Rahim, and King Edmaris became mangled cubes of flesh. Now the book doesn't give us a play-by-play, -play, but it does give us enough details to paint the picture. What we know is that Xion's torture was essentially her learning how far she could fillet a human before they died. If that wasn't terrifying enough, while conducting this experiment she was using her master chef skill to bend the laws of nature, making it so the victims didn't feel pain. So, if we break this down, Xion would slowly and meticulously cut apart her victims piece by piece, and since they didn't feel any pain, they'd be conscious watching themselves be filleted the entire time. Then oops, if she cut too deep, a single magic potion would be used, thus allowing Xion to continue her experiments once again. Repeatedly living through this horror broke Rosin, Rahim, and King Edmaris' minds. All the while, Xion's Master Chef skill rewrote the natural lulls surrounding their bodies. Speaking of our primal demon, do you remember how that one lone noble in Falmouth seemed to be supporting Yeoman Diablo? The anime didn't mention it, but before even arriving, Diablo had already persuaded this man to his side. Side note, in the book, Rosin never used magic on this guy. But hey, it was entertaining and a welcome addition. Jumping over to the Holy Empire, the anime begins telling us more about Hinata. Then while we have Hinata on our mind, let's go ahead and clarify something. So the anime hinted at this fact, but the light novel made it very clear. Hinata killed her own father, because she believed it'd make life easier for her mother. But as you saw, it didn't really seem to help. On a less depressing note, have you ever wondered about the origin of the Holy City? Probably not, but I'm about to tell you anyways. In the distant past, Luminous built and ruled over a beautiful city named Night Garden. Incorrect. This is future me who's editing. The original castle was actually named Night Rose. That was destroyed by Veldora, hence why Luminous despises him so much. This is also why Luminous chose to build the new holy capital on top of a mountain. Not only is it the perfect vantage point for spotting any incoming raging dragons, but it allows for the most important parts of the capital to be built underground, which in theory keeps it safe from Veldora's next rampage. Around this time, Rimuru receives the first payment from Falmuth, and in total, Diablo demanded for Falmuth to pay 10,000 stellar coins. With some help from the wiki, we know that one stellar coin is equal to 1.1 million US dollars, and some quick math will tell us that Falmuth is indebted to Tempest for a grand price of 11 billion US dollars. And if that wasn't wild enough, nobody's even sure if 10,000 stellar coins actually exist in this world. This next detail is a quick one, but the scene where Nikolaus talks to Hinata before she departs for Tempest, the book leads us to believe this actually took place in her bedroom. Okay, okay, the light novel doesn't specify it as her bedroom, but essentially Hinata wakes up to Nikolaus bringing her breakfast. Their conversation isn't any different than what you saw, however I feel the book made the relationship seem a little bit closer than what the anime portrayed. Okay, everything else I want to discuss is minor, so let's go into rapid fire mode. Glinda Atlee, aka the red-haired master rook. Bet you didn't know she's an otherworlder, since the anime entirely skipped her backstory. It's short and sweet, but Glinda was a successful mercenary in another world, until the day she was summoned here by the Rozos. In the anime, Xion calmly picks up a rock before launching it toward her attackers, while in the novel, slamming her sword into the ground, Xion hurls a rock, turning a paladin's shield into scrap metal. Though after that, the book proceeds just as shown in the anime. Now during episode 57, we see Diablo proclaim that he's evolved from an arc demon into a daemon lord. Say what you will, but I was watching this dubbed, and it took about 4 rewinds to realize he said daemon lord, not demon lord. I'll be the first to admit I don't speak Japanese, nor do I know which translation is better, but the light novel gives Diablo the evolution, demon peer, which is just so much easier to tell apart. Also, you know those reporters and journalists Diablo saved? Each and every one of them has been placed under Diablo's tempter skill, so our demon is able to influence their thoughts, and will know immediately if anyone dares betray him. 
Then last but not least, we need to look at the end of episode 58. Specifically, the hole in Hinata's clothing. Stop, stop. I promise I have an actual reason for this. According to the light novel, an unnamed paladin was, um, struggling to control his gaze, so Hinata straight up knocked him out for it. And that's all the noteworthy changes made up to episode 58. Depending on how this video does, I would like to make another. So if that's what you want, be sure to hit the thumbs up button on your way out. Or, if you want to know what happens in future slime seasons, well, I've got you covered. I've already made many videos with summarized animations depicting what will happen. Then as always, a special thank you to everyone who supports me on Patreon.